You see that there? It's mocking me, I'm telling you. It's saying, hey, look, you can't figure out where the heck I'm storing my code, so you can't change what I am. Can't make sure the players don't have an advantage at the beginning. Oh, we're recording here. Right. Anyway, hello everyone, this is Utagata J6 back once again with a release video for Mediate Craft version 1.5. There are only a few items on the change log this time round, however, I think you'll find they're all rather groundbreaking, hence the title. So, let's go through our usual setup of different things and take a look, shall we? The first item you'll notice is the Limestone Trowel. The Limestone Trowel is a Age of Steel alternative to the Crude Trowel. It retains all the basic abilities of the Crude Trowel. For example, you can turn dirt into lime mud, and you... However, it adds a new ability. Um, it can't float in water. No, that's not the new ability. The new ability is if you place... Oh, let's get our game mode to regular here, so we can actually normally play. If you come across uh, rock cycle blocks in the world, it's not exactly the rock cycle blocks, but rather eh, most of them, then you can actually just right-click on them with the limestone trowel to instantly harvest them. The idea is that the added durability comes from the fact that it's made out of limestone, which brings us to its crafting recipe. Right here, you can see we have limestone, a haft, and cord. You'll want to use these in the shape of a regular trowel, so sorry, component, facing downward, and just replace limestone for your building material, haft for your stick, and cord to tie it together as always. It's a rather powerful item. It has, I believe, 221 uses, so it really becomes a staple, staple item at a certain point in the game later on. Moving right along, the second, um, the second new change is that the, the sand blocks, the soft, the soft blocks in the mod actually will fall now. So, if we were to press this lever here, retract those pistons, we'll see that these sand blocks fall down, or not these sand blocks, but these soft material blocks fall down. Um, notice that the, the cotton plants which were growing on top of these plants are destroyed because this black soil did fall. So you'll have to be wary of that when you're using black sand to grow your cotton quickly. Um, speaking of cotton and cotton seeds, uh, cotton now shows its all of its growth stages properly. Um, it doesn't exactly show that here, but here's the first one, and you can all certainly discover that as you play in your own worlds. I was glad to get that all fixed up. Um, on the subject of these things, please note that Heavy Mineral Sands Ore Deposit, HMSOD, which you get Rutile from, the precursor to Titanium, is also among these soft, met soft blocks, so if you're on the beach and you see this HMSOD, uh, just be careful that you don't have it fall somewhere where you can't retrieve it. So, um, as you can see, this code is very preliminary. I believe it's mostly just issues with not understanding multiplayer code yet that's causing it to kind of wink out of existence until it hits its destination. But, for now, it will do. And if we were to mine that with our new trowel, trowel here, we would see that it's giving us Rutile just like anything else. There we are. Um, on the subject of seeds, I've reverted the flax seed drop algorithm back to what it was pre-1.4, which means you can get up to three or four different flax seeds from a plant. Hopefully that won't be happening too often, but it just wasn't working with the new algorithm that we had designed for 1.4.5, I think it was. Um, yes, let's continue along here. There's been a couple recipe changes. First of all, um, note that the recipe for the redstone eye has been updated to conform with Flower Child's new recipe. Actually, it's an old recipe, but I just hadn't noticed it. So now we'll want six lazarites, three gold nuggets, where before it was just one gold ingot in the center, and redstone. And as always, on the anvil, that will give us redstone eye. Additionally, I've added cereal recipes from flax seeds and hemp seeds. So two hemp seeds would give three cereal, or four flax seeds will give five cereal. I'm still not going to add melon seed or cotton seed recipes because those seeds are choking hazards and painful and not healthy cereal grainy gritty nuts. The final new-ish recipe that I've added here is an alternative recipe for vine traps. This seems like it's probably coming straight out of left field, but these are the kinds of things that I do find in my own personal let's play. So leaves are a little less stable than vines, however if you put three of them over a piece of fabric made from hemp fiber as always, you can get an alternative recipe for the vine trap, and hopefully people will find plenty of uses for those if they're not in biomes where they have easy access to vines. Moving right along, 
I also, also coming from the Let's Play, I'd noticed that the changes I'd made to Abandon Mineshaft chest was making it damn near impossible to get any melon seeds. So I greatly cleaned up the chests in Abandoned Mineshafts. And here you'll see the sort of assortment of... Oh, that one isn't there. Mostly the assortment of gems that can appear in the chest, along with bread and melon seeds. The, the reason this should not actually bother you all, that I've removed things like iron and redstone, is that those are all materials that you can find nearly right by the chests. Same kind of thing with the pickaxe. Same kind of thing with um, the, the wood materials. These are all things that you can practically live in an abandoned mine shaft these days. Um, so there's no reason to just give extra of those materials when you're really looking for unique materials like the gems or melon seeds. Speaking of living in abandoned mine shafts, there have also been a couple of other changes. So when you're mining underground, you'll find that the Nacolite deposit, this is the ore that gives you baking soda, have changed in their appearance. It was one of the sprites which I absolutely hated. So I, in a rare move for myself, I did go in and change the sprite. This is the new one. Um, also, I've changed the tinted glass sprite, which was uh, regard doubtless the most hated sprite in the mod. And I think this one actually is pretty cool. So now we do have a sort of, oh, I've tinted my glass, you can't see inside my car windows kind of effects, which I look forward to using these new versions in my own builds later on in the mod. Um, those are the only two. There's been a lot of discussion of texture sprites lately. I am open to new sprites for the mod, I just don't tend to make them myself, especially for blocks, because most of the blocks, as I mentioned in the forum post, are in like their fifth or sixth incarnation, even more for annoying things like black and white marble. Um, moving on though, I had mentioned I had mentioned living in abandoned mine shafts. There have been a couple changes to chisels to make this and other underground tasks even more easy. First of all, I fixed one of the one of the recipes which was off for the stone chisel. Remember, chisels are always crafted crafted with a diagonal pattern, diagonal pattern, and then cord on top to tie it together. This particular recipe I had messed up so that it looked like this, um, but that has been fixed. So the the stone chisel from Pebble recipe is working as normal. And now that we've got these chisels and such again, these are now additional blocks which, which all chisels, even wooden chisels, can mine. And that includes cobblestone, sandstone, and all types of stone brick slabs. Or of stone slabs, rather. So, we can actually demonstrate that right here if we head over to this building, and we'll see that yes, we can now mine this cobblestone very easily. Please keep in mind, however, if you actually are starting your immediate craft play near a village, you're taking away the vast majority of the difficulty of the beginning of the game, because you do have access to easy cobblestone, to a crafting table, etc, etc, etc. But, to each their own, and it certainly works for something like this little playthrough here. So, Utak, enough of the piddly stuff you say, what really happened in this release? Alright, let me tell you. The main new item in this release is the granite sledgehammer. The sledge is crafted from six halves and four granites on the anvil as such. Remember, molds don't actually affect the crafting recipe. So if we create this recipe, we will get the granite sledgehammer. The granite sledge is an incredibly, incredibly powerful tool. Um, it's also probably the most code-intensive tool in Mediate Craft, with about 3,000 lines executing every time you hit with it. And it has four modes of attack. The first is very simple. Where did that pig go? Let's hunt him down. The first is a simple left click, where the, where the sledgehammer acts like any other item in the game any other weapon in the game, shall we say, and simply deals damage to what has been hit. It deals, I believe, six damage, which is equivalent to a Soul Forge Steel axe, perhaps. It's, it's rather powerful, enough to kill most animals in one shot, and to two or three shot most other opponents. That's only the first and weakest mode of attack, however, so let's finish talking about it. The sledge works basically like a pickaxe in most respects. It will destroy pickaxe blocks, but you can see looking at this dirt, it, you might as well be mining it with hand. The sledge does not work on simple dirt blocks. However, that's only the first mode. The second, third, and fourth modes are determined by if you right-click with this block and hold it back. The amount you hold it back determines the power. So, if we only just slightly hit with it, we will destroy three blocks vertically. If we hold it a little bit longer, 
we will destroy a plus sign pattern from the central block. And if we hold all the way, we will destroy a 3x3 three three area. Which brings me to the next little comment here. Obviously, you can see this is not um, dropping the regular items. This is where the obnoxious amounts of code come in. The Sledgehammer's destruction code is incredibly precise and will only drop specific items from specific blocks. Functional blocks such as Better Than Wool's mechanical power blocks, um, crafting tables, plants, these things will not drop anything at all. However, you'll notice that most wooden blocks will drop sticks, and most blocks that you can find underground will drop some version of themselves, with a few exceptions. Dirt will drop certain amounts of dirt slabs rather than itself, it's pounded into the ground. Um, gravel will be, uh, what is it called, will be condensed into conglomerate. Clay will be condensed into shale. Um, sand will be condensed into sandstone. And that should be about it. Um, like I said, the code is very precise. It's all supposed to be doing things exactly as I want it to. Report any irregularities on the rare chance that they are actually bugs and not features. Um, so, if we go around using this using this sledgehammer a bit, we should find it is very powerful, but after a few uses we're going to start getting incredibly tired because it is taxing to use this thing. You can see my food bar starting to wiggle just right there. Also you can see here uh, that bedrock is one of the blocks it will not destroy, so there's no need to worry of, uh, well, destroying the bottom of the map. Anyway, before I get too carried away with that, trust me, there are usually... I'm hesitant to go and double the food damage values again because it does usually go down quite, quite quickly if you've actually been playing around for a little bit before you got the sledge, which I'll assume you did. Um, and that is sort of a limiting factor. I found that normally you can use it about 30 times. Also, please note, if your food hunger bar is less than one quarter, so that's two or three, yeah, two and a half meat sticks, then you cannot use the sledge at all. You simply are unable to lift it out of your fatigue. So that was fun, but let's move on a little bit. The last important item in this release of Mediate Craft is the Inferno Urn. What the hell is an Inferno Urn, Utakata? What are you doing this time? The Inferno Urn is an item that is crafted on the crafting table out of baking soda, the souls of trapped, more trapped souls, and a lava bucket. If we place this down, we'll see it has an exact order. You pour the lava into the this is pork chop, pour the lava into the urn, and top it off with baking soda. It's a very precise recipe, and the souls are not at all happy with being treated this way. I can't imagine why. But overall, this is a very unstable recipe, and one that I highly disrecommend using. In fact, I disrecommend using it so much that it can only be used in ocean biomes under normal circumstances. However, for the purposes of demonstration, allow me to demonstrate. When you right-click with, with an Inferno Urn on a still lava block in an ocean biome, you create a sort of dungeon. It can be just a single lava block, not a pool like that. The dungeon you create is a volcano. A volcano composed of obsidian, cobble, basalt, and slate, with occasional... cinnamon crystals. Or not cinnamon crystals, cinnabar crystals, which are going to become very important in future releases. However, as you can see, the volcano also rapidly fills with lava, and you'll probably want to get the hell out of there as quick as possible, which may be rendered a little bit more difficult if you are playing on a biome, if you are in an ocean biome underwater and trapped by the lava, or if you don't have a very convenient sledgehammer and are just relying on a piddly little pickaxe to escape. Um, additionally, the volcano introduces two brand new ores, which I've been stocking along since the first few releases, and those would be... Floor Appetite, which will give you this Fluorospar chemical, and Portlandite, which will give you Calcium Hydroxide, or Slaked Lime. 
Um, as always, you don't need to pay too much attention to those. However, one of them does have a new recipe. But before we go check that out and end this summary video, please let me say these volcanoes are randomly generated. I, the amount of math that I had to do for this release was sickening. I am not a particularly fond of math person most of the time. So the volcano that you get is going to be absolutely different from the volcano that everyone else gets due to a vast amount of factors. And should Flower Child introduce a uh, method of pissing villagers off, I'm going to be happy to make them rather furious that you have exploded in volcano in their backyard. So for now, let's seek sanctuary in the church, pull a, uh, pull of a Miz right here, and uh, watch the destruction. Oh, thankfully there isn't going to be any destruction because um, the lava this time happened to mainly be on the other side. However, let's finish the video off here, talking about the last new item. We talked about slaked lime got, gotten from Portlandite, the brown ore in volcanoes. Um, if you combine slaked lime with a regular egg and a clay, in any order, just a shapeless recipe, you will get a new food called the Century Egg, which is a very, very tasty food prepared through a long and difficult process, which restores 11 half drumsticks, or uh, essentially a cooked meat and a half. Um, Ah, there we are. The volcano finished loading, or rendering, or something like that. So, that basically concludes this video, my friends. I'm probably going to have to cut out a bunch of clutter. I, and I will... And before I release this to you all, I will double the, damp, the hunger effects of the sledgehammer, and I will limit volcanoes to only ocean biomes for a lot of reasons which are not negotiable, so you can just come to expect that. Thanks for watching, and this basically concludes the video. Let's go check out the top.